Hi, everybody. It's Reed Robbins, um, sequestered here in quarantine, lockdown in New York City. And uh, I'm coming to you today because I want to give you a quick tutorial on how to set up movies in Digital Performer. And uh, definitely I've gotten this question a number of times. I've seen a lot of people who will uh, start their queue at bar 400. And we don't want to do that. We want to set it up the right way. So here we go. Okay, so I'm a big believer that if you organize the kind of thing that we're going to be doing here by checklist, then you will be able to set your mind towards more creative things. The first thing is I'm going to show you the movie I've made for us to consider. And here it is. So I just grabbed this part of it uh, right here, which shows the time code counting down. And then I just stopped at a uh, one hour frame. Now one hour, why is that? Uh, the equipment that used to be used, and maybe it's still true, um, would freak out if you went from a minus number to a plus number with time code. So we don't want zero hours, zero minutes, zero seconds, and zero frames. What we want is for it to start on one hour. That way we can have some pre-roll. Now, if we look at the beginning of this, we'll see that the very first frame in this capture is 59 minutes, 55 seconds, and zero frames. So, when we go into DP and we import this movie, like so, the first thing we have to do is set the movie start time. And you do that by right clicking, and here it is, set movie start time. So, as you can see, I've done a little research on this. So, it is what this is. So, I'm going to put the movie start time in there. So, now it will know where the movie starts. Always get burned in time code if you can. Now the next question is a frame rate. Okay, so if I go to this movie and I open it in QuickTime Player, I can look at the Movie Inspector right there, and it will tell me a lot of data about this movie. Uh, one thing is the frames per second, right? Now this says 23.98. And in actuality, it is, that frame rate is really 23.976 frames per second. Now, Digital Performer has all the frame rates that are commonly used here, and you can also use a non-standard frame rate, which I'm not going to open that because I don't need it. But So this is uh, 23.976 frames per second. So... Now that we have that set up, we'll go, we've, I've created a queue here, which you see right here, and I am going to set the chunk start time. And I have it set to one measure, real time is zero, and then this should be our frames. There, right. So... The first bar is on one hour, uh, zero minutes, zero seconds, zero frames, okay? Now, I work with it a little bit. I figure out I want a certain tempo. So I'm going to go now into the event list, and I am going to, wait a minute, I need to be in the conductor track, 
And there's a number of different ways to do this, but the point is, is you need to put in a tempo change. So let's say I wanted to do 150, and I'm going to put it in at bar 1. Okay, there we go. So now we have a tempo event of 150 at bar 1. Now, of course, you say to yourself, well, you know, I'm going to need a little pre-roll to get into this, and also, what if I have a pickup bar? Here's what you do. You go into Project, Conductor Track, Insert Measures. And what we're going to do here is we're going to insert three measures at the start of Measure 1. And this is very important. Maintain all times following the insertion point. So that means three measures is going to be Measure 0, Measure minus 1, and Measure minus 2. Now, I'm just going to show you this real quick. We go to the chunks, and we look at the chunk start time right there. Okay. Now, watch what happens when I insert those bars. Project, conductor track, insert measures, three bars before the start of bar one, maintaining all times following the insertion point. And now, we have minus 2, minus 1, 0, and 1. Now watch what happens when I go to bar 1. Bar 1 is right on that. If I pull the movie to the front, the arrow keys back up by frames, or go forward by frames. You notice that this, which is showing us the frame rate, and this, which is also showing us the burn in frame rate, are right in sync with each other, right? And it starts at bar 1. So if I put bar 1 in here, the frames are at 0. And here's another beautiful thing. If we look at real time, that's also 0. The reason that's good is because then you can see the actual time of the movie. Because the real time is the time of the movie. The frames are the time code, which show you basically basically going to be offset by an hour. So we're all set. Now the only thing that might come up with this is that the director might say to you, oh, you know what, I would really like to have this cue go faster. So then what you do is you go back, of course I could just undo, but um, go back, snip this out, control J, oh no, I'm sorry, command J, um, and then you'd have to go back here and set this to its default, uh, which would be measure one, all zeros, and then one hour and all zeros, and no time code bits. Then you'd go to the event list, change the tempo to what you needed it to be. Event list always pops to the to the instrument, MIDI channel, whatever, so you need to do it. So let's say it's 160 now. All right, then I would go back in again, insert measures in the conductor track, and then, like magic, we're back to this. If I had just changed the tempo, then bar one wouldn't be at zero anymore. Just to talk about chunks a little bit more, um, a lot of times artists use DP on tour where they set up each song in the set list as a different chunk. Because a lot of times you want to add to what your musicians can do, uh, background vocals, stuff like that. and. Uh, in films, each cue is its own chunk. And with that, you can set the start time uh, so that, as I said at the beginning, the dreaded bar 400 thing does not come into the picture. All right, so for this next little bit, I have three cues that I want to do. Let, let me just put them in here. One, M2, and then one, M3. Now the first one is uh, the start of the movie. The second one is where um, 
an axe chopping down a door with Jack Nicholson. The third one is a cowboy, still of a cowboy. So let's look at those spots. Um, now, I would tell you something about this movie to start with is that it has a burn in time code, but the burn in time code is starts at zero. So uh, you'll get this. Um, that, that means that we sort of have to cope with it in a slightly different way. Um, so I'm going to go to uh, 1M1. And of course, the, the, uh, the movie's time code is already there just by nature of default. Well, no, it's not. OK, so uh, we need to do that. OK, so that is the movie start time code. The next part is here. Set chunk start time. We're going to want it to start. Now, I've worked this out myself at. Uh, seven seconds and eight frames like that okay so if I go to bar one there we are at seven seconds and eight frames and you can see it it fades up so there's no clear I'm gonna bring the movie into focus and so now I'm uh, you can see that the um, Time codes in both the counter up here and also in the movie are in sync, so that's good news. And there we go. So I'm just going to back up to bar one there, and there we are. We're in sync with the time code. Now, I will make this, let's say, 125 event list conductor. Uh, make that 125. The tempo. Now I'm going to go in here to project conductor track insert measures three measures at the start of measure one so I'll do that. If you look here that has changed the values in this particular chunk start time because it is adjusted for you. It's minus two now it's minus five seconds and seventy six hundredths and then it has a start time here of one second and 13 frames plus the 72 time code bits. So that is what you have there. Now I'm just going to I'm going to go through this very quickly. The next place where we want a queue is 1 minute 53 seconds and 13 frames. So I'm going to do that right now. And notice it it defaults to 1 hour, so I have to make it 0 hours. 1 minute, 53, and 13 frames. Now this, that's right there. That's where the axe goes into the door. The next one is going to be at 2 minutes, 52 seconds, and 9 uh, frames. So that's 0 again. you got to watch out for that, or you'll be wondering where you're movie is. And so then if I go into this chunk, play enable this chunk, you'll see that is it right there. If I move it to the front, go back, that last frame is something else. So there is where we get into that next bit. So we're there. The next thing is to go into these chunks and put in our pre-roll, project, conductor track, insert measures. And you know, we have what we want. Three measures, uh, at the start of bar one and maintain all times following the insertion point, meaning that 1 minute 53 seconds and 18 frames is where we want the insertion point to be still. So it has to change the chunk start, which it did. It changed the chunk start from what I put so that we could have that pre-roll. And then again, if I put here, there we are with the axe. That's the moment right there where the axe actually hits. And then with this one, we'll put this into play and we'll do the same thing. We are going to uh, project, conductor track, and certain measures. We'll do our same all three measures. And now with that, we have the same thing. So there's the cowboy thing. All right, so I'll save that. And uh, let's just throw some stuff in here. So if we go back to 1M1, 
I have that polysynth here and MIDI and I'm just going to go into the MIDI editor here and I'm just going to go to bar one I will come up here and I will just write for an A major chord okay so back to the pencil tool mm -hmm. pencil tool and then uh, back to the arrow and then I'm just going to pull that out till I notice the movie scrubs that's pretty cool so um, you can you can use that to find out how far something should go. I'll just option it. Um, let's do that. And then there. So then it's just going to start here. Okay. So that's our first cue. It's the easiest film score I've ever had to write. This would be some real cool low brass. So we had the A major chord for the first cue, then the repeated notes. And then um, for this one, so then I'll go into the MIDI editor and at bar one. That's embarrassingly bad. But anyway, so now check this out this is where it gets fun I'm gonna take 1m1 and I'm gonna duplicate it uh, let's see control uh, control click and then I'm gonna it's an option click to, to rename it I'm gonna call it complete movie or something like that this will be your chunk where you play the complete movie from so now I'm gonna just take this. Actually, I'll start from bar zero. Let's pretend we have a count-off measure. I'm going to bounce it. Uh, it should be stereo, of course, because, you know. And then um, I'm going to want to add it to sequence. See, that's one of the important things. Uh, so I'm adding that to the sequence. Just bouncing that in place. Then I'm going to go to Q2. Start from bar zero stereo adding the sequence and then this one right here now if I were really taking care of business I would have named these better which I did not do so I'll go here I will bounce again here we go bounce I'll call it uh, Q3 or oh, 1M uh, I'll call it 1M3 the other one I should have called 1M 2 and 1M1. So I'm going to go into the complete movie, which has the right start time, of course. And I'm just going to pop these three in here. Let's put them in the tracks area. Put this in the tracks area. Put this in the tracks area. And you'll see what happens. Notice these ended up in the right place because of the time code. So this starts at five seconds because of the zero. Remember it started at 708. This one starts at 151 and uh, that's for the pickup which is in silence but bar one is 153 and this is 250 and bar one is 252. And keep in mind that this complete movie sequence the tempo doesn't matter. Um, it's best uh, to lock the tracks so they don't move around if you change the tempo. Here's the locks right here. So that's 1M1. This is 1M2. That's 1M3. Just uh, 1M1, 1M2 right there. So those are your three cues. Now from this, you can play back the movie. The director comes over. And you want to show him this work because, let's face it, this is really something. Um, there you go. There's your A chord at the start. You go over here. And here, I have the movie audio down, as you notice. There you go. Okay, so there's the second one. 
really going to be happy with that one. And here comes the third one. All right. So that's it. If these were somehow in the wrong place, let's say that one was there and this one was here and that one was there. Well, that's completely wrong, right? But if I just lasso all these, go into audio, and then timestamps move to original timestamp, bam, they'll slap right back to where they belong. And then here are your various cues. And of course, if you look at it, the music, because it's going to start in bar one, when you hand out sheet music, it will start on bar one or have a pickup. And everybody's copy of it will work. You don't have to give musicians music that starts on bar 400. You don't have to talk in big numbers. Uh, everything's clean and wonderful. So we have worked our way into the night. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. I hope you got something from this. And keep me posted. Let me know how it's going for you. Of course, you can always do things like like the video, or subscribe, ring the notifications thing. But other than that, I'd love to know how this came in handy or anything you want me to talk about. Thanks. See you next time.